Thank you, John. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ray Zhou from Georgia Institute of Technology. I'm here to present you our paper, Goodbye Text, Hello Emoji, which is about mobile communication on WeChat in China. Oops. Sorry. Mobile communication has become an integral part of our lives more than ever, and text messaging is one of the most dominant ways of mobile communication. Aside from text, um, the, uh, another element is often seen in mobile communication, which is emoji. Emoji was originally developed in Japan to support plain text for the sake of convenience, but it soon spread to the rest of the world. It becomes so welcoming that it has stepped outside of the virtual online world, but into people's real lives. For example, there is a restaurant that uses emoji on its menu, and there are emoji pattern pillows too. And in November last year, there was a conference called Emojicon held in San Francisco. We chose to study emoji and its role in mobile communication because of its growing popularity on messaging mediums. Many researchers have studied emoji or similar elements such as emoticons before. We read their work and learned that while the form of online communication is getting richer and richer, the deep motivations and possibly various ways of sending emoji could be explored in greater depth. Thus, we wanted to study how and why people use emoji. By looking by looking at one of the countries where emoji is mostly used. We selected China as our focus, since it is one of the Eastern Asian countries where emoji flourishes. We wanted to know how and why Chinese people send emoji. More specifically, we wanted to study how and why Chinese people send emoji and stickers on WeChat. But what is WeChat? WeChat is a Chinese mobile instant messenger released in 2011. As you can see from the screen, it is very similar to other popular mobile instant messengers, such as WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. See the left picture? The home includes all the conversations. Click on one of them, it will bring user into that conversation, and the user can then send and receive messages, as shown by the right picture. WeChat did start off as a simple mobile instant messenger, but it does not stop there. From 2011 to now, it soon developed into an all-in-one mobile platform that can nearly achieve anything. In the United States, people use different mobile applications for sending instant messages, networking, paying bills, navigating around, reading articles, calling taxes, and more. However, all these activities can be done on WeChat solely. Instead of which switching around several different applications, WeChat users only need to stick to WeChat. This makes WeChat much more than a simple mobile instant messenger. Indeed, WeChat has become so wildly used in China and is currently the number four mostly used mobile instant messenger worldwide. The y-axis shows the different mobile instant messengers, and the x-axis shows the numbers of active users they have for a month. As of January 2017, it has 846 million monthly active users. As mentioned earlier, we wanted to know how and why Chinese people send emoji and stickers on WeChat. As you can see, this screenshot shows how emoji are sent in WeChat. Emoji are small, roughly the same size of one character, so they can be sent in line with other text. In WeChat, a default group of emoji comes with the application and thus cannot be edited. This is similar to how emoji are embedded in Android smartphones or iPhone's keyboards. Compared with emoji, stickers are much bigger so they can only be sent as one separate message at a, as a, at a time, as shown on the left screenshot. While emoji are all static, stickers can be statics or animated. 
In WeChat, one can download stickers either from a sticker gallery or create stickers elsewhere, and then upload them to WeChat for transmission. The right screenshot shows a list of stickers saved by a user. To understand how Chinese people send emoji and stickers on WeChat, we went to China and interviewed 30 Chinese WeChat users one-on-one. -on -one. We spent time with each of them and asked them how they send emoji and stickers and if they had any stories to share with us. We also asked them to illustrate their use of their favorite emoji and stickers, and we observed those stickers they saved. With all the interview and observation data, we explored several salient findings. We found that emoji and stickers are used to support text, to change the meaning of text, or to resonate with the user's identity, to nourish subcultures, and to encourage more innovative user creations. I'll talk about each of the findings one by one. Emoji are often used to support text, since there are many meanings that text cannot convey, including nonverbal cures, like emotions and facial expressions. Hence, our participants used emoji to convey these meanings. For example, in this sentence, let's meet at the ramen bar, see you later. One may add a heart emoji at the end of this sentence to address the welcoming emotion and convey the information of hoping to have a great time. Such an emoji supports text. Besides supporting text, emoji are also used to change the meaning of text. In this example, shut up, can have very different meanings if different emoji are added. <laughs> the first one seems pretty neutral with a, zip, with a zipper in the mouth. The second one with an emoji illustrating nausea conveys a different meaning. And the third one is expressing yet another meaning compared with the first two. Our participants liked some emoji and stickers because these elements resonate with their identities. One of our particip participants told us he used more stickers that featured policemen because he was a policeman. The same emoji can also be interpreted differently among different groups of people. For example, this smiley may mean an ordinary, normal smile but it may also mean something else. The younger participants we interviewed believed this smiley is not a real smile, but something passive and represent the feeling of speechlessness. However, such an interpretation is not widely known or accepted by everybody. Among those who know this alternative meaning of this emoji and actively use it, this emoji forms a subculture of communication. Finally, since users can create their own stickers outside of WeChat and then upload these stickers to WeChat for use, many users take advantage of this and create their own stickers. Two examples that we found for, of their creativity include erotic stickers and in instructive stickers. As you can see, among the stickers saved by our participants, several of them are actually erotic stickers. These erotic stickers may be cartoons or porn video clips. We also learned that there are WeChat groups with members who only intend to share these erotic stickers with each other. Another instance of users creating their own stickers was found when we were looking through one of our participants' saved stickers. Our participant was running small business, and she told us that some of the customers who used iPhones didn't really know how to change an iPhone setting. This sticker, which illustrates a series of interactions for changing an iPhone setting, saved her phone space as well as the effort of explaini explaining the instructions whenever her customers had a problem. This sticker is an example of an instructive sticker. From our study, we learned that with emoji and stickers, online communication can and has become much richer. 
Emoji and stickers, because of their heavy use of graphics, can also potentially overcome some barriers of language and text. People who are semi-literate may have difficulty in understanding words, so that emoji and sticker can be alternatives. What we see here are the pages of a book that was written only with emoji and similar graphic elements. The aim of the author was to write a book that everybody could read. In the future, we imagine that emoji and stickers can potentially become a universal language so that people from all over the world can communicate without any problems. We thank our participants, colleagues, and reviewers for their generous help and feedback. Thank you all for listening, and now I'm happy to take any questions. Hi, I'm uh, Mihaela Volvorano from Purdue University. So you mentioned your research question was about how Chinese people um, use emojis. Uh, could you please talk a little bit about your sampling strategy and the participants, the 30 participants who actually um, provided the data that this is based on? Sure, sure. Um, so we went back to China and recruited 30 participants from different, actually from different locations. So um, from three different locations, so they are from different social stratas. And then um, it's more about uh, snowboard sampling other than kind of like strategic peaking because some of the people you know they don't really use emoji and stickers or they don't really use smartphones so we cannot really recruit them and then we try to kind of like um, recruit an even number of females and males but then because I'm a female so it turned out that uh, I had more female participants yeah mm -hmm. that's generally how we uh, recruited the participants okay thank you thanks Hi, I'm Aditya from University of Washington. Great talk. Thank you. So question about your next steps, which where you showed like a book, a page from the book, which is with emojis. Yes. So since these emojis are like highly overloaded with different meanings, so what would be, like would this make sense then? Yeah, I think this is a great question. So um, when I was looking at the book and when I was thinking about such a universal language, would it be really universal because I can understand those emoji because I know them. And then obviously some of the meanings people from elsewhere, they may not know them. So I guess there is, um, so even though it's, it's a, um, emoji and stickers are graphic elements that everybody can know um, without the necessarily of learning text or language, but then I think there is, there is a common ground that, that people have to reach in order to understand them, yeah. Thank you. Hi, this Hi. is Anna Rita from UIC. So my question is somewhat related to the previous one. So you interviewed people. Did you fe feel like at some point someone actually wanted to mean something through an emoji and someone got the other meaning and it created confusion or like yeah. hampered their social relations somewhere? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, let me just try to rephrase. Um, you were referring to this slide, right? Not specifically this slide, okay. like I'm referring more about the slide that you talked about, the smile thing. Okay. So the younger generation interpreted smile in a oh. certain way versus the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So um, thank, uh, thank you for your question first. So I am like, I am in my 20s. So I went back and interviewed other people. I just. I just found out that um, younger people were like, they just assume that this means speechlessness. But also, as I said earlier, we interviewed people from different places with different ages, different social stratas. So what I found later was that this, is not, this was not a universal meaning. And people were, who were like in, my, um, in older generations or they were not, they were just not within that circle that they have the access to understand an alternative meaning for this Mali and, and, and those examples. Yeah, yeah, actually it feels to me like it may happen like people who actually communicate in WeChat, they are like of the same age people. I mean, the group is okay. more uh, yeah, coherent. coherent of yeah. the same age. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it should be a nice thing to study later. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Hi, I'm Aaron Jane, University of Colorado at Boulder. I think it's a great talk. Thank you. Um, I just have one question. So you're mentioning uh, emojis and stickers can represent identity. I think that's really interesting. I'm just wondering, um, 
Have you seen or felt about a different kind of identity management? Say, like person X uses an emoji or sticker because he always uses that emoji or sticker? Yeah, that's a great question, absolutely. I couldn't fit it into my talk, but it was on my paper. Anyways, um, so absolutely. Um, people's, I didn't study that rigorously because this was a, quali a qualitative study. We just interviewed people and observed people, but then people who, so people who have very different personalities, they use very different stickers. They download very different stickers. And one of the participants that I interviewed, she was like, I just feel I am her. Her is the character and the sticker. I just feel I just feel I'm her. I just feel like her. I just that's why I use the sticker. Yeah, so it's not only about the occupation or the age, it's also about the personality and really the, the core of the identity and some nuances, meanings that the stickers can can convey. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Ray Pan from Simon Fraser University. I'm wondering, do you notice any uh, gender difference in the results? For example, the, uh, just now you mentioned there are some stickers and uh, uh, emojis are not appropriate. For example, some are porn videos, some are even the um, uh, not safe for work contents. I'm wondering, do you notice any gender difference in those things? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely. So when I was interviewing people, because I know that some of the, um, some of the guys they had these kind of stickers. Really, it was like, it was like only guys. And I had a great difficulty to get access to that because I'm oh. a girl. <laughs> okay. And they, they were like, guys circulating around these erotic stickers much more often than girls. And, okay. I, and within my, I have, um, I have 18 female participants and none of them used any of this. <laughs> only young guys. <laughs> Not, oh, yeah, not, not elderly people, not elderly guy, uh, older <laughs> men, sorry. So I had to like, I had to like, you know, back from them. Send okay, me so that. apart from those, uh, um, and it, now say for work content, do you notice any other gender difference in some other result you found? I think, um, yeah, mentioned earlier that some of the stickers, guys, won't, guys just won't use them. No, I don't. And then, yeah. 